On this week's show, let's talk single figure playsets and variants. All this and more in episode 121 of the Inside Infinity podcast. Do you like Disney as much as we like Disney? Of course you do. Well, if you do, you should head on over to Media Meltdown Podcast. Look for the Mousecast, a bi-weekly podcast about all things Disney. Disney movies, Disney rumors, theme parks, and news. Everything you could possibly want from Disney is at the Mousecast. Head on over to MediaMeltdownPodcast.com to find out more. Hello everyone, welcome to Inside Infinity, episode 121, recorded January 25th, 2015. I'm one of your three hosts this evening, Will Kelly, and joining me once again this week, our variant Aussie, Jason Haynes. Jason, how are you doing tonight, buddy? Variant? Well, anyway, (laughs) happy Australia Day, everybody. I prepared a list of the top 500 Australian Infinity characters this year. (laughs) So uh, as soon as the introductions are over, we'll get started, and we should be done in about four hours. <laughs> that's that's amazing. <laughs> it's not today, is it? Wasn't it just the other day? Yeah, it is. It, no, it's today. Oh my! Why do you think I'm off work? Oh. It's a public holiday, and I'm choosing to spend my Australia Day with you, American Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> that's well. Thank you, thank you. That is my heart is warm for that. No uh, you got a, a Australian Day kind of celebration video from uh the one and only deadpool the other day i saw uh, your tweets about that people were digging that yeah yeah <laughs> there it is well well happy australia day i'm the selfish american that didn't realize welcome mr canadian <laughs> <laughs> lloyd how are you doing tonight you know i'm doing good uh time travels hard getting all these dates right is very difficult so we, we gotta we gotta figure that out for next australia day well Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I think we should just have like, let's just make up an no, no, Infinity Day. That's been used. We we got to come up with a, a Inside Infinity Day where we can all three celebrate our Infinity nationalities. I I, I don't know. Yeah, no, just that, that obviously has to bake a little bit more there. Will get, get, back to the oven, <laughs> get that idea out a little. Well, that's why, uh, you know, we are a democracy and I generally run these ideas through all of you. But you know what? (laughs) With that, let's continue on. Welcome to everyone who is watching us live in the Twitch chat, twitch.tv forward slash Disney Infinity TV. Like to say hello to some friends of ours, AWG, Benson the Hero, welcome back. CA Carter, good seeing you, Tad, how's it going? JP is going to be streaming on uh, D- or, excuse me, Res tomorrow. What up, Pirate Steven? Samson, how you doing, buddy? And Tesla Blitz, I'm sorry if uh, other people are there. I cannot see the names, but welcome one and all to this uh, live edition of the Ensign Fanny Podcast. We have a fun show ahead of everyone, and we're super excited about it. So with that, gentlemen... Let's get on with the show. How's that sound? Sounds good. Good, good. All right, guys. Well, uh, it was an interesting week of news. Um, First up, the fun stuff, uh, Marvel Disc Descriptions. We uh, we talked about them on last week's show, but now we actually have some descriptions. So this first news item is coming at you from InfinityInquire.com. Jason over there. And uh, some... You get to see the the photos of the figures here, but we also, like I said, got the official descriptions this week. So what we were calling the Tesseract last week, because that's what it looks like, apparently in the world of Infinity is the Cosmic Cube Blast. Unleash a powerful energy blast on nearby foes. Guys, what do you think? Sure. (laughs) Name it whatever you want. It's a Tesseract for sure. Sounds like a Tesseract Uh, for me to me too definitely uh, it's, uh, i don't know is there like some sort of trademark that they that they're infringing on when they when they use it uh, last time i i checked disney owns marvel yeah. so it shouldn't be an issue but if we have to call it cosmic cube we'll call it cosmic cube. <laughs> i like it jason thoughts still don't know what it is move on <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm bringing it up here on screen <laughs> so. did you get the tweets uh, by the way last week no, Did no, I didn't. Didn't no? everyone oh. realize that uh, education was not required, <laughs> and we were moved on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Cool. The next item up is uh, Dark Hawk's blast. Blast obstacles with a obstacles. Blast obstacles with a powerful energy beam from your chest. S- huh? 
So we were mm -hmm. thinking this was going to be a team up disc, but is this going to be like an event disc instead? It, it looks like it's something that charges up and then you can just use it as a weapon. That's what it sounds like. It's kind of weird, though. I don't know. Hmm. Jason, I'm trying to think something else that it could be like. I guess it's 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 probably going to be similar to calling in a missile strike. It's just instead of coming from the sky, it comes from you. Yeah. It'll look super sweet if you're playing as Iron Man. It comes from your chest. <laughs> From your, uh, what's it called? What's that thing called? You know, the thing that's keeping you alive. The arc reactor. Yes, that's it. The mini arc you reactor. You so suck at Marvel knowledge, Will. What are you doing? <laughs> Everyone <laughs> knows that. Tweet Will about what the, what the Iron Man's chest is called. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> sure, sure you can. Hey, I remember uh, during uh, the World's Fair of... of Walt Disney, I mean uh, Tony Stark, they were uh, they were talking about that. So I remember the the large arc reactor. So I'm I'm up on it. People are yelling sure. at me to uh, change the Twitch game name. There, people, are you happy now? Everyone's telling me to focus, and they're distracting me. All right, cool. That's that's number two. Uh, let's talk about number three here. Nova Corp Strike. Call upon the Nova Corps and unleash a tactical strike from above. So this is 100% without a doubt. It's like the helicarrier airstrike. Yep. Yep. I wonder what it's going to look like, though. Is it going to have, like, a Nova Corps flair to it? I wonder if it's going to be like a ship comes down and blasts them and then flies off or something that'd be cool that's what they need to do like add mm -hmm. add animation not just an attack from the sky oh could you imagine if it's like a, a, y, a y wing strafe run or something and this y wing flies through and drops bombs on things or yeah. a tie fighter oh my goodness things like that would be, would be really cool heck yeah bring in some of that battlefront action with the y wings mm -hmm. <laughs> would be cool jason do you like the nova Corps? do you know what the nova Corps is Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, whatever. Uh, next up is Ghost Riders Motorcycle. Take a ride on the wild side with Ghost Riders Flaming Motorcycle. I mean, we, we pretty much all know what this is going to look like, but it's going to be awesome. I wanna, it is. I want to play as Jack Skellington driving this bad boy. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. I, I just love... I love Ghost Rider. Uh, I hope this is this and his whip is precursor to him being a figure at some point. Yeah, I, I really dig him from way back in the day of reading his comics. Kind of. Is he actually anything at the moment, Ghost Rider? Like, is he in any of the cartoons or? I'm assuming no. the film rights are with someone other than Disney because I don't think they were Disney films. The last ones that came out many years ago. Oh, I don't. Is... I don't know. He's he's not technically a mutant, so I don't think. His rights would be owned by anybody, but you never know. Like, they did some really weird things when when Marvel was almost out of business, and they had to sell. They had a fire sale for all of their IP um, for TV and movies. So who knows if if uh, he's owned by someone else? I'm not sure off the top of my head anyway. So it was the production company for that one was Columbia Pictures and Marvel Studios. Relative, okay. Relative, <sighs> relativity Media and Crystal Sky Pictures. So. Based on that, I would assume that that uh, Marvel still still has the rights to uh, update that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It just seems weird, though, doesn't it? You got everything Ghost Rider, just no Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not well, same as Darkwing Duck. We have everything Darkwing Duck, just don't have Darkwing Duck. Yeah, but he's coming. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I got embarrassed last week on Twitter with that. Um, I guess I got. I must have missed that. Yeah, I, I posted about I guess the the two year old, and I remember it. Uh, the two-year-old announcement that Darkwing Duck was coming back in uh, Disney XD. And mm -hmm. it was on a reputable blog. Well, at least I consider it a reputable blog. Whatever. And, and the funny thing was, was all the comments on Reddit saying, it totally sounds like a last press release that they sent out. How can anybody fall for it? And if anybody's read press releases from a company, they all sound almost exactly the same. So it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if the press release was very similar to one that Marvel actually sent out before. Um, so that's probably why everybody got all confused yeah. and tricked by this. Um, but yeah, I'd really love that if that actually happened. Fingers crossed. I don't know. Maybe that's why JV was asking a while ago. Yeah, it could be. So cool. Um, well, that is the official descriptions of those uh, those power discs. It's kind of cool. It does give us a little bit more insight in some of them. Um, 
the whole dark hawks blast thing is one i'm still curious curious about but uh but yeah whatever what's interesting is i'm remembering from last show did we say that these are going to have different effects in the playset versus the toy box so that's going to be interesting if they now retroactively going forward have to create two different you know uh effects for each of these Marvel power discs that's seems like creating work for themselves yeah but it's good i guess yeah, yeah. They said that that all the circular power discs will have some effect in the playset that, um, that is different than what you would get in the toy box. So, I, I don't know what that means yet. Um, I'm I have a couple ideas, but who knows, right? Um, they could they could do something really awesome or something that's just like little items appear in in the match. Um, we've only seen one of those actually happen when they did kind of like the the little battle with with JV doing the color commentary, which was awesome. Um, but that could have changed. So that was early on development. So that might not even be what that particular disc does. So, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm, uh, I, I hope it does something awesome because I, I think this place, it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun when you have a bunch of buddies over and uh, you want to waste a few hours. Totally. James in the chat is saying the description makes uh, that particular one, the Dark Hawk Blast, sound like a weapon. So um, interesting if maybe it's something you could wield or something, but I don't. Those, oh, no. But those are usually the octagonal ones, sure. uh, or hex hexagonal ones, not not the circular mm -hmm. ones. So yeah, I don't know what that's going to do. That's true. Cool guys. Well, uh, anything else you want to say about the power disc? Nope. Nope. All right, Jason. People have been waiting for you for months upon months for a rant, and <laughs> the time may be upon us. Uh, just like all things in a rabid community, we kind of got a little bit of a controversy last week. So first, let me present the news, the item, the news item, and then we can discuss the controversy and whether or not as a panel we agree or disagree. So I'm pulling up an official blog post here, an official blog post that none other than our friend JV talked about. This is on Disney Interactive's uh, actual website. I'm just going to try to read, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, but uh, I'm going to read to you because there's some important points about this announcement. And this is the official announcement of uh, the Marvel Battlegrounds playset and single figures. So here we go. Let's get started. Uh, first off, we have a description. I'm going to read this because we actually have a question about later in the show. Marvel Battlegrounds is a four-player arcade-style brawler that allows you to battle with up to three friends locally. Locally, that's an important point. You get to play in 12 levels across eight all-new arenas. So keep that in mind. We'll be uh, revisiting that later in the show. Now let's get to the controversy. Well, excuse me. This is news section. Controversy in a moment. You guys know that Disney Infinity team is always listening to your feedback, and we make changes along the way based on what we hear from the community. Your feedback has led to one significant change in our playset configuration. We heard from you that you want more choice in how you expand your Disney Infinity collections, especially with playsets. With this in mind, the Marvel Battlegrounds playset pack will come with the playset piece and one figure, Captain America, the first Avenger. Now it's up to you to decide which other Marvel superheroes and supervillains you want to fight with you in Marvel Battlegrounds from a selection of 25 characters. And more to come soon. So, gentlemen, and then at the end it says, if you uh, pre-order, there's retailer, uh, not exclusives, but uh, pre-order bonuses, you can get a free Marvel 2.0 character of your choosing with the pre-order of this playset. So, guys, uh, we talked about this a little bit last week. We talked about this leak, and uh, but now it's official news. The Marvel Battlegrounds playset is coming March 14th, and uh, it is including one figure, and that one figure is the variant. So, first off, let's just talk about the playset March 14th. Is that is that cool? I mean, that coincides with what we talked about last week. There, is there any real... Anything else we need to, to say about that piece? We know it's coming. We're excited. Uh, the local part is kind of a bummer. So maybe that's another reason why it's a playset. Both uh, Racing and uh, Toybox Takeover, which are Toybox game discs, are online co-op. So it kind of puts a wrench in that whole thing for us. We've been hoping that Battlegrounds might turn into a 
toy box game. And, and it's still made, but um, thoughts on the local piece? Good lord. Yeah, it, it makes it makes sense. Every other playset is local only. Um, this is such a departure from a normal playset, though. So I can see why a lot of people were holding out hope for the, the fact that this may come with online multiplayer. Um, sadly, it doesn't. Um, I don't know. Hopefully, DI4 does, because that would be a hell of a lot of fun to be playing some of these uh, playsets multiplayer with some people over the internet. You know, I'm not personally much of a fighter fan. Um... Is the AI and single player fighters entertaining enough? I mean, I guess this is we're expecting this to be a Power Stone esque game, but I don't know. Yeah. Is that going to be an issue? Is that of concern, Lloyd, or am I off my rocker? I don't. I don't think so. Uh, online fighters multiplayer oftentimes is is hard. Like when they rebooted um, uh, Street Fighter and they brought it to PS4, um, like online multiplayer didn't work for the longest time and this is street fighter which is a game that's been around forever and and it's been multiplayer forever so um i that's probably part of the reason why this isn't online multiplayer multiplayer four people jumping around um might be a bit of an issue um i i don't think the ai is going to be too too bad um like even the the ai in the game isn't horrible i mean it's not great um, let's let's be honest but it's not horrible um so if they add a lot a lot more kind of fighting ai and um, and hopefully these fighters aren't going to be cheap like the racers are in, um, in Speedway where you have to have a perfect run to get gold, um, which is really frustrating for the little kids that are playing it. Um, hopefully they can, they can tune it a little bit better. Um, I, I don't know. It, it should be fine. I, I'm not too concerned about that. Um, I'm just more concerned about the number of times I'm going to have all my buddies over to play multiplayer, um, compared to if we could just play online. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, are you bummed out about this? No. <laughs> <laughs> you're so you're so even keel these days, Jason. This is not what I remember. Yeah. No, it's no, Marvel. No, no. It's Marvel. He has nothing. To, he has no uh, comment on anything. Well, no, no. This is a complete. Uh, uh, we'll save it for the next comment. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> Move on to the next question. So, so people in the chat are saying, yeah, they wish it was uh, going to be online co-op as well. Or actually, I don't even know if it's co-op. I guess it might be co-op slash adversarial online. Uh, but people are saying they, they love the playset piece. So, Yeah, what is it? Oh, it's the Infinity Goal, is it? That's what I was thinking, but... I don't... Or it's just a fist crushing through the... Oh, no, I, concrete I, or I think it's Cap's gloves. That's I don't know if you can yeah, see it on see. screen, but there's like these uh, not M's, but these kind of half um, half cubes here that look similar to not only what's on Cap's gloves here, but also what's on Cap's uh, arms and shoulders there. So um, yeah, I don't I don't know. What do people in the playset think it is? That's dark. The playset is Dark Hawk's fist, and then someone hmm. is saying it looks like Hulk's fist. Let's bring up a uh, Dark Hawks uh, play or power disc again and see if we can compare that. Ah, uh, it's too too small. See, I don't know. I think that'd be kind of weird to be Dark Hawks fist. It's yeah. a fist though, <laughs> coming out of something. So that's description yeah. enough. That is true. That is true. Um, Oh, James was joking. It's, it's a representation of the community's fist waving at JV. <laughs> taking a character off them. Oh. Very, very subtle. What, what, very subtle. what do you mean by that? Let's talk about the controversy now. Yeah. It, it actually it looks like it is Cap's glove because it has the same little, um, little design if you look at the figure next to the playset. It's kind of weird, though. Yeah. It's got those little U things. That's on it. Ah, that's the letter I was looking for. I was looking for you upside down. Uh, upside down. Yeah, I don't. I guess it makes sense given the fact that um, he is the apparently the star of this playset. I mean, they they chose to bundle him. Um, all right, so weird. all right, guys. So this this news came out, and uh, you know, I was working, and I went a uh, kind of went along my day without much thought, and then all of a sudden, Twitter blew up. So it seems like people out there in the community are super upset about the fact that not only the fact that it's including one figure, but also that it's including one 
one variant figure of a figure that we already own that we've been told is going to play differently, but you know, a, a version of a figure we already own. So let's compartmentalize this guys. Uh, first off the it's $30 now it's $5 cheaper here in the States. Um, I don't know how that's going to relate to everyone else, but it's $5 cheaper in the States and it's one figure. So if you do the math, it's you're still paying essentially $10 more than what you would normally because normally you get two figures which are 15 bucks. If you take off five bucks of that, you're still left with $10 and no figure. So um, first off guys, do you are you upset that it's of the price point of only or being $30 and then also that it's only one figure? Yes. <laughs> now, is that your thought, Lloyd, or is that the thought of the community? Uh, no, I, I'm not. I'm not super upset at the price. Um, I think we've all been saying people that like play sets. I, I love play sets. It's one of the things that I love the most about the game is going through the play sets multiple times with my kids. Um, my complaint with them is always they're too small. Like I can beat them in a couple hours. Um, there's always these extra things to do. But the main story is only maybe a couple hours long. So if paying a little bit extra for these play sets means that the actual story that's embedded in these play sets is more, mm -hmm. um, I'm okay with that. I, I'll pay an extra $10 to get a play set that lasts six to eight hours of content and then extra stuff to do in addition to that. Uh, so I guess it all, it, it all, it, 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 we have to see it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to be upset about it yet because we don't know. Um, but if it's the same amount of content that we're getting and they're charging more, um, that's terrible. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, the, the fact that it only comes with one figure, um, for me, the, the biggest problem with that is it that means immediately there's going to be one less female figure. I love picking up a play set that has a, that has a female character in it because that means each of my kids immediately has a favorite character. Um, this now is only going to be one. Um, the fact that this is a four player brawler and it only comes with one figure is another weird thing. Yeah. Um, so there's a, there's a bunch of things to it that could be disappointing or aggravating. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of, I'm going to not be super ranty yet. I'm going to hold out hope that, um, the amount of content that's in this is going to justify the extra price because I had no problem with the play set, uh, the, the toy set adventure, whatever things, um, being $20 each because you got a lot of content in that for your $20. Right. So if there's a similar amount of content and that takes up $20 of your $30 package, $10 for the figure, that's okay. Um, but again, it, it all has to see how it all is all going to play out from a kind of a story um, standpoint. Yeah. yeah. Jason, uh, your thoughts on, on being 30 bucks and only one figure now. Yeah, it makes zero sense to me. I think this is, I think that to be honest, I think the only reason that figure is in the box is because the starter set didn't come with a Marvel figure. I guarantee it. Mm. In my opinion, I think they would love to be able to release play sets with no figures and let you choose which figures you want to add to your thing. But, of course, they can't do that because if you've bought 3.0, you've only got three stars figures. And so if you bought this playset piece, you effectively can do with it. Yeah. So, but that's my personal take on it. I would prefer them actually to do that, that to just, just sell the playset, playset piece by itself. I mean, for me to be super happy, completely remove it all. <laughs> I just think let's call it what it is and it should just be DLC. Yeah. Like doesn't even need the I mean they're the most useless things ever. It frustrates me that you have to put these things on the base to play the certain game. I don't understand why you just can't launch it from the the game itself. I think they're the worst but figures they so look to speak. Cool. You don't think they look cool? I like having oh, my right. shelf of them that are all just like lined up. Yeah, but that's really all they do. Yeah, they just, sure. I mean, anyways, yeah. the point is, I think that's ultimately, I think, where they'd like it to be, that you just buy the playset piece for 20 bucks, $15, something like that, and then you just buy whichever. It would need to have clearly labeled on the back of the box, these are the figures that are mm -hmm. compatible with it. You choose which ones you want. I think that would work best. But yeah, I can see where people would get upset that, that when you're only offering one figure for a a not so substantial discount that looks bad um so i'm kind of surprised they did it to be honest particularly when it is a variant cap yeah. that way it maybe would have made it a bit easier if you've got a brand new figure on oh, here's a variant that you could almost look okay well it's a bonus variant 
cool. Yeah. Otherwise, you might think twice about buying another Captain America figure by itself. Yeah, my, my thoughts on this, I'll keep it brief. I, For one, some reason, I didn't really have much issue in the single figure, single um, single playset, and a little bit cheaper. I think maybe, Jason, because maybe I'm hopeful that eventually they're going to just separate it all and, and it be, um, you know, you can really kind of pick and choose what you want to buy for each playset. Uh, that being said, one thing that was super interesting about this blog post, I mean, it was kind of... Uh, Here's an explainer of it, what we're doing for this playset. But it it didn't really, although I think if you had to fall on one side or the other, I would say this might be an announcement of the things to come. But they didn't explicitly say, this is how every playset is going to be delivered from this point forward, a single figure with a single playset piece. Um, so maybe this is just a light way of kind of getting us used to that idea. And then Jason may be the eventual single model of uh, of either downloadable content or or just completely separated out. Well, again, if they had have launched with a figure from each franchise in the starter set, there'd be nothing stopping them just releasing yeah. it as a playset only piece because you'd have something to play with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, but then, of course, for everyone who's an Infinity Hardcore, you've got tons of Marvel characters that you're going to be able to play with day one. Um, and I think that makes a lot of sense. M- my gut to this was that they didn't have any they didn't have enough figures to release in a two-pack and I, I don't know if that's the case i mean we we know four marvel figures but but yeah. i mean for a new playset that's i guess that's not bad but if you have two in there then you're only going to have three new characters so that was that was kind of my gut let's talk about uh, jason you kind of mentioned it let's talk about the variant figure um I, I really had to kind of check myself. A uh, Cap was my favorite 2.0 character, which really surprised me. And so I've been excited for this variant figure. So that piece, as a fan, doesn't doesn't bother me. But I absolutely understand why so many people out there was like, okay, you're not only forcing us to only have one figure now with the playset, but you're also forcing us to get a redundant character. Even I don't care if some of these other pieces, it, it, he looks different, he acts different, he fights different. I don't care about that. I already have a cap figure, so I, I totally understand that. Do you think that this would have been an easier pill to swallow if it was if it was uh, Ant Man or or Black Panther? For me, it messes with the law of Dizzy Infinity because we're playing on the concept that it's not Captain America; it's the Disney Infinity toy version of Captain America. And so, by releasing a second variant figure, which is clearly more focused on the Civil War version of Captain America. It's like you're devaluing that other Captain America. Clearly, this one looks better. Right. But like, how how is that going to work moving forward? We've just got, or we're about to get classic blue. What if the blue in the new Jungle Book film is totally awesome? And it's like, well, now we're going to release that one as well. It's just muddying that waters of, let's say, that we've been buying the infinitized version of these characters. So regardless whether a dip better model could come out, it's like, no, we've invested in, this is the Disney Infinity Captain America. It's similar to what they've been doing with with Mickey, where you have multiple versions of Mickey living in the world. Um, I'm less upset about that because it's Mickey Mouse. Um, it's kind of the man in, in Disney, right? Um, but for it to happen in, in Marvel, which already had so few characters, well, I guess not so few, but the new characters are so few of them for, for one of them to be a re-release and for a second one to be something that was a special edition in, in 2.0, it, it, there's less figures to go and buy. M- my actual worry about this playset was that it would come with Black Suit Spider-Man. Mm. And I'd be like, oh, that's going to make a lot of people that went out and got the, the Vita version just to get it. It's going to make them really upset. So I'm happy that that at least didn't happen. Um, but I would like to have seen all new characters, like have Cap as uh, another figure that's available for people that want to buy him, but have all new figures to get people excited um, so they could buy a, a new playset, two new figures that you've never seen before. Well, granted, the new Cap plays totally different than the old Cap. I don't know. It would be nice to have new figures. Yeah. Like I've, I've already been saying Black Suit Spider-Man is almost a car, a carbon copy of, of the original Spider-Man. I've had people tweeting at me all week saying, oh, he's different. There's different animations. And yes, OK, there's a couple extra moves. There's a couple extra animations. But 90 percent of what you do with that figure is the same, whether you're using the regular Spider-Man or Black mm-hmm. Suit. 
Um, it would be nice if cap is like that too. It's supposed to be, but what if there's only a few extra animations, then that kind of makes him a useless figure. That's not going to happen from what we understand, but it, it, I don't know. It, it kind of scares me moving forward that we're going to get a lot of um, variants that are going to be very similar to their originals. Um, for people that are collecting, maybe that's cool. But for people that want value um, and, and choice, it's going to be less um, less figures that are available for them to buy um, that might suit their play style. Yeah. This should have been a costume change disc, not a figure. Yep. If, if you felt like, you know, we want a version of Captain America that's closer to the films, should have been a costume disc because now it just seems like, oh, yeah, the original artist of the original Captain America got it wrong. This is how he should have looked as the Infinity, um, you know, character. Yeah. It's Because the movies were out when, like, Captain America in that form was out before Dizzy Infinity was done, correct? Yeah, yeah but you get that. You get the Captain America 1 outfit. Um, I forgot what it's called. The Winter Soldier, I think. No, no, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. Uh, his yeah. buddy. Uh, first, uh, Bucky. first, first hero. No, I can't remember what it was called. The I know what you're talking yeah. about. The costume. Yeah, yeah. And we already have a variant Iron Man too. I totally forgot about that. You have your uh, your Hulkbuster, which is a variant version of Iron Man. So now we have multiple variants uh, for the Marvel figures. And there's so many Marvel characters they could have chose from. That just I don't know. It hurts a little yeah. bit. Yeah, Benson, uh, the hero in the chat, is saying, you know, he doesn't have the ability, he doesn't have the uh, extra cash to just throw around for extra figures. So for him, having one single figure in there, uh, he, he loses so much of that value. And then having it be a redundant figure kind of hurts. So um, the last thing I think we should talk about before, so we, we kind of put this topic to bed. This was, now I, I agree with all of, the discussion we've had so far. I totally understand why the com uh, community kind of reacted the way they did. My biggest sticking point with this entire thing, though, was the blog post, and it was specifically the line I'm bringing up on screen here, and I'm going to read this off again. Your feedback has led to one significant change in our playset configuration. We heard from you that you want more choice in how you expand your Disney Infinity collections, especially with playsets. Um, my personal opinion is that that's just disingenuous. It's PR speak for saying, hey, we want to make more money. <laughs> so we're going to have one less figure, uh, a slight discount. But in the end, we're going to be making more money. And um, I just I, I wish this line wasn't in here. Like, OK, yes. Yes. Say the Infinity team's always listening to your feedback and making changes along the way. OK, cool. Leave it at that. But don't say that. We're the ones responsible for making this decision because I think if if we were, we would as a community. I don't think we would have made that decision. Yeah, it's it's been it's PR spin. I it yeah. <laughs> There's not much you can say, but like you read a press release, it has some sort of spin in it. Yeah. That's just the spin that it is. And I, I do love the fact that they are lowering the price. They did that with the play set. It's a lower price. You get or sorry, the starter set is a lower price. Um, the play set is a lower price. I get that money is a huge thing for a lot of people like uh, Disney, like Lego dimensions, hundred dollars, like that sticker shock when that came out. Um, a lot of my friends that have kids are like, my kids are going to love this. I'm not dropping a hundred dollars to get the starter set. So bringing the price down is totally something that should happen. And, and I love that it is happening. Um, but this is lowering the price of the play set and including the same character that you probably already have. If you're a Disney infinity fan, it, it hurts a little bit more. It's a totally different character. I get it, but it's not. It's still Captain America. If you don't like Captain America, you're not going to like this one any more than the one yeah. you already hate. You're just going to not like it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I was I was hopeful that we would have got some new a whole bunch of new Marvel characters with this play set um, coming out, not just the the four leaked um, ones that we got. Yep. Jason, anything? I was just going to say this reeks of Marvel's doing if I if I had to take a guess, and I know nothing behind the scenes, but everything about that box set suggests to me, Marvel was the one that made the decision. No, Captain America is going in this, in this playset, and he will look closer to the Captain America that uh, is in the film. Because just based on it's got that Civil War sticker on the, on the box. This is just Marvel's, uh, tampering. If I had to guess, <laughs> I, I don't think this is all the. Uh, people's at Disney Infinity's unanimous decision. I think this is probably a little bit of legal work going on here that's resulted 
in this but that's just my guess that's a that, yeah. that's a good catch the sticker we've never seen anything like that costume True. inspired by the costume or excuse me costume inspired by marvel civil war captain america it, it could also be this could be something that's coming from the toys r us's and the eb games and game stops and and targets because now there's three toys to life three major toys to life games on the market disney infinity skylanders lego dimensions there's amiibo so it, it, when you go to the game section of any retailer now there is packaged figures everywhere so they could have come and said you know what these play sets we love them they take too much room they take three pegs on our wall if you could shrink it down to two pegs uh, we'd happily stock them but we might have to cut back our order if it's going to take up this much room so they could have been feeling pressure from from the retailers as well. That's a good point. So we don't we don't know what happens behind the scenes, but I don't know. I, in the future, if there if there's only one figure and that's what we're going to get every single time, I'm okay with that as long as they're not always a reskin variant yeah. of something that we already have. James in the chat is saying this is almost certainly tampering from on high, not Infinity's call, and that's a good point. That's something that I think I even have to remind myself at times. Uh, you know, it's they have people to answer to. And and even though it's all Disney, it's it's not like it's all Disney. I mean, there there's very sensitive relationships being navigated through throughout all of these kind of partnerships. So that's something to keep in mind when we are frustrated or straight at fans. We must be aware that there's there's lots of things in play that we may not be aware of. And uh, and yeah, so in other words, don't take it out on all on JP. <laughs> <laughs> Really bad for him the day when he's fielding all these questions and it's just like oh the amount of hate yeah. you just had to do a search for for his username and the amount of tweets that were coming in was just crazy yeah. so i bad for the man he <laughs> definitely took one right on the chops for everybody. they're probably like jv we know this is going to be hard for the community to swallow so we need you to write a blog post and it needs to be coming directly from you and he's like no <laughs> <laughs> he's like this is why we pay you okay <laughs> Cool, guys. Well, uh, that's it for the news. Do you have anything else you want to mention before we move on to some fun stuff? No? No, I'm ready for fun. Fun stuff. All right, cool. First fun stuff. Uh, it is now. We've been tweeting at for a little while, us along with many members of the community. We've been talking about the Infinite Fan Awards. Rez has been participating. We've been participating in Media Meltdown along with lots of other Disney Infinity outlets in the community. So uh, a couple weeks ago, we were announcing the nominations for figures now is the time to vote you have until the 30th so you have uh, five days to vote and you can see the list of the presenters uh the the different presenters are the ones who announced are going to present their winnings but here is your chance to vote so make sure you go to infinifans excuse me infinifanawards.com be in the show notes and you can uh you can vote for your favorite uh stuff your your let's see here uh bad gamer Lim in the chat he had best star wars power disc and so you can do pose jack you can do galactic team up uh rest i'm just going in order here best marvel power disc you had two options there to choose from i starly tv best disney power disc and so on and so on so make sure you head on over to infinifanawards.com and vote for your uh your favorite disney infinity and uh, some of your favorite people in the community will be announcing that stuff real soon. So that was the first kind of... Uh... All right. So that is the Infinite Fan Awards. Next up, John, friend of the show, asked uh, not only Inside Infinity a couple questions this week, but also Rez. We'll save the Rez for the Rez channel. But let's answer his Infinity questions. So this actually has to do with that piece I was referring to early in the show, uh, written in the blog post. Regarding Disney Infinity, what do you think is meant when it says 12 levels and 8 battle arenas in the Marvel Battlegrounds playset? Gentlemen, I'm going to pass that question to you guys. <laughs> He's becking me forth. To it. Um, so what I think it is, it's just going to be there's, there's going to be... I don't know, um, basic arenas that are going to have different forms. Yeah. So you might have the helicarrier um, as an odd example. So you might have the deck of the helicarrier, then you might have a battle inside the helicarrier. Um, we know that there's going to be a lot of um, destructible parts of the environments. Um, so maybe some of those destructible parts you might destruct from one, one part of the level 
into what might be another level that you would start on. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that all comes out. But yeah, I think that's pretty much what it's going to be. It's, uh, yeah, 12, 12 levels, but only eight individual yeah. unique locations. Yeah, that's my thought too, is that the, uh, the eight battle arenas are kind of the environments, and then the levels are going to be different versions of that environment or so different areas of that environment like say the shield helicarrier you might have uh one of the levels be on the carrier deck while another one might be in the fan room from the movie another one might be on the the like uh kind of command center area so um those are just that's just a throw out example but i think you're totally spawn on Lloyd. yeah it'll be like raceway probably where there's eight separate properties um so you, you have different different levels based on different characters mm -hmm. so you're going to have um wakanda you're going to have um new york probably you're going to have a whole bunch of different places um from the marvel universe that are going to have their own levels um but they're going to be different versions of those levels yep. kind of like in 2.0 we got two different versions of uh, manhattan for our place <laughs> it would be two different Ooh. versions of manhattan to battle that still stings yeah <laughs> 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 I'm going to say a little bit different. I want to say I'm going to hope that when it talks about levels that it's a different game mechanic. That I hope that's like a side-scrolling brawler mm. like I started to build in uh, in 2.0 and then within that those 12 levels there's 8 arenas based on those because there's got to be story in it somewhere. Otherwise, what and this is an interesting question is I would love to know what's the official defining element for Disney that defines the difference between playset and um, the Dingus. whatever they're called the the what do they differentiate? Obviously, um, the an obvious one is that one's in a toy box and one's not. But as I said last week, if that's all that's preventing you from throwing everyone together, it's like they're just names, people. There must be mm -hmm. some way that we can you know effectively erase the playset uh but still have you know cult because uh, i mean the all those game discs yes they're in the toy box but you can't say you can produce that content one for one in the toy box so mm -hmm. by definition it's not really the toy box mm -hmm. so why can't they just erase this whole playset idea and you know what I mean? So is it story? So I'm just assuming if story maybe is it, then maybe there needs to be deeper story included in this in order to, you know, give it that playset mm. uh, title. Just something yeah. to uh, ponder. Interesting. I like it. Because in my mindset, like I think I would like to see playsets change to, and I think Lloyd would agree with this because you mentioned this about, um, I think it was a Skylanders that had a battle mode that your kids just play over and over. My daughter's the same. She just continually restarts the um, one of the Star Wars play sets, and which I, you know, I don't get it, but that's just not my gaming head, you mm -hmm. know, mind space. But she just loves restarting it and playing it. I'm like, what's wrong with just having a play set being this play set, almost an arena with tons of things to do? So instead of trying to shoehorn a story in there, just produce an enemy generating factory that's just going to continually spit enemies at me. So I can destroy them until I'm bored with killing enemies, and then let me go do something else in the playset. I do you think so, that'd be much more almost like a what's the term? It's I don't know because to me stories have a start and end. I'll play a playset, and I'm like I've experienced the story. I'm not going back to that playset. But if it was just a place where there's fun stuff to do, I'd be all over it. I'd be continually returning to go. Oh sweet, I've got a new character. I'm going to go into that play set. I'm going to do the whatever. Know, You're I, crazy. I, I just, and you are contradicting <laughs> yourself because I, all you've done on the show is talk about how much you love play sets and you want more play sets. And I know. <laughs> but different form. I'm See, saying, you, not these story driven things. I, I, I think the play set should be story driven. There should be, you start, there's a start and an end. Um, but what playset should also do is plug into the to the toy box hub. So when you buy a new playset, put the piece down, it unlocks that arena thing in the toy box hub. So you put down um, whatever whatever playset, one of the Star Wars ones. The toy box hub gets one more pie piece bigger, and then that's exactly what it has. It has the battles. Yeah. It has little bits of Star Wars content that you can go to that is based around the the first trilogy or the second trilogy or episode 
the seven. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, that would be amazing because then there'd be best of both worlds. You have the full on story that I, I love because I, I love playing games from start to finish, experiencing the story. Uh, I love the characters. I love the worlds. Um, I love that stuff. Uh, but then also having just the arena, because like I said, with Skylanders, my kids would sit there and they would play battle mode for 12 hours straight if I let them like they would like every single Skylanders that I had would be on the table like they wouldn't be there when we started. But a couple hours later, every single figure is there because they played it so much. They're keep swapping out figures. Um, so I would love a best of both worlds like what you yeah, described, yeah. Jason, would be amazing if it was kind of a, a value add when you buy yeah. a playset, you get this little you get your your uh, trivial pursuit piece gets one more pie um that you can go play in um which would be which would be amazing i completely agree and i think that also solves the issue because we all know this battlegrounds play sets not going to carry over to 4.0 well we're assuming play sets historically have not carried over so effectively they become unlock keys to unlock toys on the on the thing which is fine but as long as there's value in the toys that it uh, unlocks, and at the moment, if it's just providing um, toys that you can use in the toy box, why can't it unlock, I guess, similar to the templates, where it's like, here's the Force Awakens template, that it's all about just creating a brawling mechanic, which is why this place it's so confusing to me, because, as I said, it seems like on paper, it seems should be more of a game disc that would have allowed for every character in the Dizzy Infinity roster to be a brawler, regardless of how much work it is to give all those characters brawling mechanics. Um, yeah, it's just a confusing one for me that, you know, maybe I, I, it is a mystery to me. I mean, I'm not wrong. There hasn't been a ton of coverage on this playset other than that one trailer, correct? We haven't seen too much as far as how it works. Yeah. So... You know, I haven't seen any any evidence of a deep story in it, as far as I could tell. Yeah, I mean, we are a couple months out still, but well, I guess we're only two and a half months almost at this point. But uh, but yeah, I expect that to ramp a little, a little bit more before we get it's, there. <clears throat> definitely, so. definitely. Cool. We'll continue the battle. That was fun. I like that. I like that conversation, Jason. Um, almost reached through the screen and strangled you, but I like where it ended up. <laughs> I, I will agree with both you on kind of where that combo ended. All right, gentlemen, uh, last couple things before we end tonight. So uh, a couple weeks ago, Lim on our Twitch, no, excuse me, on our Instagram account, uh, solicited questions. And if you have questions for us about the game or about the show, about anything really, you can just tweet us at Disney Infinity TV or any one of the members will be going over our Twitter handles later in the show. And we'll be sure to add in the, uh, in the show live. So Noah asked us, this is just a fun one. Uh, which Disney character would you want a Disney infinity character? Jason being a huge Disney guy, which if you could have just any Disney character, what, what would it be? Who would it be? It's just too tough a question. Um, um, Captain Hook at this point, I think. Okay. That's all you get. I'm not going to ask why. Captain Hook. Lloyd, do you have one? <laughs> Scrooge McDuck. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm going to go... I changed mine to his. Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> I'll go Scrooge McDuck too. Now, I guess maybe... Um, I would do... I almost said Aladdin. We have an Aladdin figure. Maybe Simba. All No rules here. We can have quadrupeds. <laughs> Uh, next question. This is coming from a Disney Infinity. Uh, excuse me, Disney Gamer. What things should I know before starting my own toy box? Out of the three of us, Jason, you're kind of the resident uh, toy box master builder in the group. So before you jump into a toy box, what thing? What's the most important thing to know? Get connected with the community. Go to uh, the fan forums. Get follow all the toy box artists on Twitter because. You are about to come across a whole heck heap of bugs, yeah. and you need to know that it's a bug <laughs> or it's a, it's just hard. You're gonna need help. Like the toy box is um, super super simple in some ways if you're just dabbling, but if you really want to make some complex stuff, it gets extremely mm. complex. Like I myself at the moment, I'm just dabbling in the finally dabbling in the music toy, and oh boy, like you know. You need a degree in uh, music to work that thing out. So I'm, I'm, yeah. So get connected with the community. That's the best thing you can do. So you can ask questions. Virtually everyone 
on Twitter and on the fan forums is always going to be happy to help you out with putting you on the right path to uh, achieving what you want to achieve in your in your toy box. And that's definitely the number one thing you need to do. Perfect. I'm going to throw another one out there. Uh, familiarize yourself with all the toy box toys. You got to know what tools you have to work with before uh, you can kind of brainstorm how to use them. So, Lloyd, anything to add? No, I, I'm such a a beginner when it comes to making toy boxes. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to say something stupid. That's okay. This next question is specific just to you. So I'm actually kind of glad. So this is coming from round of toast. Do extra characters come with extra trophies or are extra trophies tied to new play sets only, or am I totally wrong? And there's no extra trophies. Sadly, um, there are no extra trophies. Um, I was super stoked uh, to see for Lego Dimensions that whenever you buy a level pack, you get a mini collection of three trophies that you can unlock by playing that that level pack. I would love to see that with Disney Infinity um, so that you can get your platinum on the base game. But then every toy box that you buy has its own set of three to five trophies that you can unlock in it. That would just be an amazing thing to put over on the top for people that like to collect trophies like I do. Yeah. Yeah, kind of surprised, um, but maybe it's something they'll introduce. All right. Well, thanks for the questions, everyone. We appreciate it. Again, tweet us if you have any. Uh, and also, we have something new. So a couple weeks ago, guys, we had Steve C. on the show who was giving away uh, some awesome posters, and he started this trivia. So I think each and every week, starting today, we are now going to do a trivia section where I'm going to, as the host, I'm not going to be able to participate, sadly. But uh, I'm going to ask each and every one of you a... Wait a second. So you don't have to answer the hard questions because you're the host. That's not fair. Right? <laughs> right? I just I get to ask just, them. Just all the time. So, someone has to know the answer. <laughs> uh, what we would like is we want the community to stump us. So... Submit your questions, trivia questions, and it must be a question with three multiple choice answers. Make sure you include the answer. A tweet ask and just a hashtag it ask IDI for Inside Disney Infinity. So hashtag ask IDI. Uh, this first week, I came up with the question for Jason and Lloyd. It's not the one I wanted to ask, but I think it will do. So Disney Infinity 1.0 was released on August 18th, 2013. Oh, I also meant to mention, uh, delay your answers in the Twitch chat because these guys are going to have to answer and I'm going to be keeping score for, for a year. So uh, <laughs> don't, don't let them win. So, gentlemen, when was Disney Infinity 1.0 announced? I'm going to give you three dates and you're, gonna, you're both going to tell me when you're ready and then you're going to tell me the dates. So I should have you write down the answers so you can't cheat off of each other, but here it goes. Date number one, January 5th, 2013, January 15th, 2013, or January 25th, 2013. So when was Disney Infinity 1.0 initially announced? 15th. That's Lloyd's answer. Jason, yep. what is your answer? Uh, the was it the Gen twenty? Yeah, the fifth, fifteenth, or twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. All right. Well, since that was a guess, I'm not going to ask you why you chose that, Lloyd. Why <laughs> did you choose the fifteenth? I it, the fifth would have been way too early, I think, for January. Okay. So middle of the month seems like that would make a little bit of sense. Okay, Jason, why did you choose the twenty fifth? Because I have no idea. I was completely not even interested in Disney Infinity when it was first announced. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I just remember going, uh, oh, Disney cash grab. Who wants to play that stupid game? That's that's honesty. True story. That is honesty. Yeah. And look, here you are now, uh, two and a half years <laughs> later. Yeah, I woke up, woke up money many months later. All right, Twitch, do you know who was right in this question? Drumroll, please. Jeez. Lloyd. It's Jason. You got the answer right. January oh, 15th, 2013, which bums me out. I wish it was January 25th because then it would have been exactly three years ago today. But uh, Lloyd is the winner. So Lloyd has one point. Jason has zero points. Jason, it's going to be tough, especially when you go back on hiatus. And Will starts with uh, 100 points. So, uh, you know, it's just keeping it fair. No Marvel questions. No Marvel questions. When I'm on. Hey, I'm super worried uh, about this quiz because it can be anything anything Disney. So Disney Infinity, 
Disney, and we might revise this after we all start to get answers wrong, but it could be Star <laughs> Wars, Marvel, Disney, Disney Infinity. It could be uh, the whole nine. So again, hashtag ask IDI, and we'll be sure to, to ask your, your questions on there. So I thought that was fun, guys. Good job. Good job, Lloyd. Thank You're you. now the winner. Lucky guess. <laughs> Doesn't matter how you win as long as you win. That's true. Guys, I think that's going to wrap up this week's show. Uh, appreciate you both coming on. Jason, thanks for celebrating Australia Day with us. No problems. It was awesome. And uh, <laughs> I can get on with my partying now that the show's yeah. over. Yes, you can. Where can people find you on the internet if they want to connect with you? At the Jason Haynes on Twitter. And that's about it at the moment. That's all right. People, they still need to send you those questions from last week. I don't remember what they were. Thanks again for coming this week, buddy. No problems. Lloyd, where can people find you on the inner tubes? Oh, you can follow me on uh, Twitter. I'm at Dasme on Twitter, D-A-S-M-E. Uh, you can check out all the stuff uh, that I do over at res.tv, uh, myself and the team that we have working over there. Uh, got some interesting stuff coming up. Uh, did some Minecraft um, videos, doing some Ghostbusters stuff. So if you love those types of things, head on over to res.tv to check them out. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you should. It's our, our parent network. Uh, some of the Media Meltdown guys are over there as well. So please, please, uh, we're relaunching that site. So if you if you like us, what we do, uh, head over to res.tv. Follow us on Twitch over there as well. It's twitch.tv forward slash res.tv. Really trying to build that back up. So uh, yeah, we appreciate the support. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter at iLiam. Uh, also, our Twitter account at Disney Infinity TV. Uh, doing live streams on Monday. Excuse me. Uh, Lim is doing live streams Monday and uh, Thursday and Friday. I'm doing live streams in the mornings, Wednesday and uh, Thursday. So, check out those live streams. You just got to be subscribed to this channel and you will be all good to go. Thank you so much, everyone who joined us watched us live and if you didn't watch us live that's cool too thanks for watching us and listening to us after the fact we really appreciate it thanks everyone we appreciate it can't wait till next week and until then we hope your week is filled with infinite possibilities We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Inside Infinity Podcast. If you like what we do, please subscribe to us on all of our channels, youtube.com forward slash Disney Infinity TV. Look for us on iTunes, Inside Infinity. Also, check us out on patreon.com. Thanks to all of our patrons. Without this, without you, we could not do the show. So every, every dollar counts. We really appreciate it. It allows us to bring you the show each and every week. Also, like I said earlier, please check out res.tv or youtube.com forward slash res.tv. It's our parent network.